The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Small Cap Roundup, with your host, Kate Stalter. Stalter. Well, happy Tuesday morning to everybody listening out there in small cap radio land. I've put up a chart of the IWM right up there just to get us started with the big picture perspective of what's going on with the small caps. Not so great right now, but there is some 200 day moving average support. I'm going to talk a little bit more in just a few minutes when we do look at some stocks about where I'm at with my trading right now and how I'm viewing these markets. Just a hint, very cautious at this juncture. I wanted to start out by saying many of you probably saw that email that went out this morning from TFNN sending white light out to all the folks who have been suffering or affected by some of the natural disasters it did mention some of the fires out here in new mexico now i'm in santa fe and i gotta tell you we're, we're fine right here in fact i'm just looking out it's a beautiful sunny day but there are quite a few fires around here we had a very dry winter not as much snow or moisture as you would like to see and for folks who are unfamiliar with this area yes we get snow and that is a really good thing because that keeps the ground nice and prepped normally for these dry summer seasons you get out here in the desert. But unfortunately, there just has not been that much precipitation in the past few years. So the fire danger is pretty high right now. There are some wildfires in the area. And I do expect that there will be some more over the course of this summer. Last summer, I could actually see a lot of the smoke from my house up in the mountains, not in any sense that we were in any danger of being evacuated here. It was just not that close. I just had a view of it out in the mountains, out by Los Alamos. So in any case, I wanted to thank the folks at TFNN for sending that out and thinking of everybody and what else have we got? Let's turn to the big global picture. What's going on in the world outside of New Mexico? So we have the European summit at the end of the week. We have the markets turning lower now after a little bout of perhaps some kind of relief rally or maybe maybe even some short covering as the month is starting to wrap up here maybe we're getting into a bit of the window dressing season and we are getting ready to end up a quarter as well here so we might see some action in the next few sessions related to that just got a lot going on we've got the uh, in addition to all of that normal activity that you might see at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter you also have the uncertainty about what could happen with this european summit We've got continued uncertainty about the Fed, and that leads me into the promotion for a terrific guest that we're going to have joining us at the bottom of the hour. You're going to want to stick around and listen to my friend Hank Mulvahill. He is with Mulvahill Asset Management in Richardson, Texas. And Hank is not only a terrific investor and advisor, but he also is an expert on the Fed. He's been on the show before, just briefly talking about a Fed Friday, the Fed Friday events that he runs uh, there in the Dallas area. I believe it's three or four times a year. And Hank has studied the Fed for many years, how it affects investors and traders, and he is prepared to talk today about what traders need to know about what the Fed is up to and what to expect. So that will be some terrific insight that we'll get from him a little later on in the show. And, of course, we've also got the Supreme Court decision on Obamacare. And I guess Jay Carney, the spokesman, said it was okay that we call it Obamacare. So 
<laughs> okay. I know a lot of people had thought it was pejorative. I always thought, hey, it's his, uh, it was his crowning legislative achievement. Why would he not want to put his name on it and, and run on it? So, uh, yeah. Anyway, the decision is expected from the Supreme Court no later than Thursday. Now, I know a lot of people who just, I believe it's wishful thinking or just their ideology. They get steam coming out of their ears, whatever they think about this particular president. And they expect the whole thing to be overturned. Now, I'm not a constitutional scholar. I don't even play one on TV. It does seem that that's wishful thinking. And I've heard even some long-time, lifelong conservatives have even acknowledged there are some, some good aspects of the bill. But obviously, I, I, the one that most people expect to see the ruling on is just the constitutionality of forcing American citizens to buy anything. So that will be interesting. That's coming up. And we've seen the health insurers have traded lower in the last few months or so uh, because of the notion that they would have to insure people who perhaps otherwise might be difficult to insure or I heard on the news yesterday somebody was even citing the example of a person might be injured and be in the ambulance on their way to the hospital they don't call them ambulances anymore do they they're the uh I don't know what they call the vehicles, but I know that they're the uh, EMT, those EMT wagons. I don't think they're really technically ambulances, but anyway. You'll be in the EMT vehicle on your way to emergency, and you can call up and get insurance right on the spot. That would uh, be hard to see that go through in that uh, short period of time. But that's the kind of thing that concerns people and that the insurance companies have been traded lower on. So I want to talk a little bit today about some other sectors, though, of the health care industry that are doing well, that are trading, have been trading well in recent, in recent months, and that's the biotech sector. So that's something just the R&D in that sector has continued to spur New development has continued to spur growth in some of these stocks. So I want to talk a little bit about some of those today. Now, before I do that here, I do want to remind everybody, we are extending the Tiger Dollar promotion for a few more days. And that is, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we've had the wildfires out in some of the western states. And there was a tropical storm down in Florida that affected some folks. So definitely want to give everybody a chance to participate in this. So if you go over to TFNN.com, you can take advantage of the Tiger Dollars promotion. And as well, there are a group of free webinars being offered as part of this promotion. So you want to take advantage of those as well. All right, so I'm going to put up a chart here on Tiger TV for a stock that I've talked about quite a bit. I know Ken Shreve has talked about this one. Basil has talked about this one. It's Alexion Pharmaceuticals, ALXN. Obviously not a small cap. We've got a market cap here of about $18.55 billion. And the reason I'm showing you this one today is because this is a great example of a stock that has been one of the market leaders and has been really rising despite any other concern about what might be happening in the medical field, the healthcare industry. This is why it's so important to really break out the subsectors and not to make a judgment that all sectors of medical might be affected by whatever happens with a Supreme Court decision or not this week. This one has obviously been rallying much higher regardless of any speculation about what might be going on. And this is, let's see here, so it moves about 2 million shares a day, good liquidity. Really, as you can see there, I've got it on a daily chart just below its all-time high that it reached just a few sessions ago. And, you know, it's not unusual. I'm noticing a lot of stocks have rallied to all-time highs. A few of them are pulling back. 
And once again, it's an interesting time in the market because you are seeing some breakouts, but even after they do break out from consolidations, as this one just did a week or so ago, they are having some trouble just because of the market uncertainty. If any of you happen to hear the interview I did last week with Edward Hornstein, who's a hedge fund manager in New York who does use a growth investing approach incorporating technicals and fundamentals and growth investing has been challenging recently there, there's absolutely no question about this and one of the things that Ed was talking about was the fact that he is not attempting to get into this market and is really sitting on the sidelines right now and I know for a lot of people that sounds like the kind of activity that would just drive them nuts. I understand that, that it's very, very hard not to jump in there. It does require a lot of discipline, and you do get the feeling very often that, hey, I'm probably missing out on some gains. But in most of these cases, we've had, for example, a couple of very short-lived market uptrends recently. There was one confirmed in the later part of April that was short-lived. We had one confirmed earlier this month that is in peril at the moment and it's very very hard to say in most of these cases that you've had the breakouts that have been working now I do in the low price leaders newsletter we have a couple of trades on right now and one of them is actually doing very well and it's going to have to be monitored very carefully to make sure that it does not sink back into lost territory you don't want that to happen but nonetheless this is a time to be very cautious and that's what I was alluding to at the top of the show that I was going to talk a little bit about my market outlook that's what I'm doing right now because it's very very crucial that traders not try to outsmart the market at this juncture it's especially people with more of a swing trading or even not necessarily day trading a somewhat of a longer term viewpoint such as the one that I'm using such as the one that you often see with the stocks that Ken Shreve talks about or certainly the ones that Ed Hornstein was talking about the other day and it is very hard right now to get any kind of traction there are some stocks rallying to new highs I have a couple of them on a list that I'm going to try and get to after the break right here what that just means to me is that they could be potentially good watch list candidates at this juncture because you're seeing some good institutional support right now that the professional investors believe in these stocks and are buying them so we'll come back to some of these biotechs that may be at or near new highs right after the break I'm Kate Stalter, 877-927-6648. Give us a call. take a hands-on approach to managing your investments and whether you're bullish or bearish on u.s treasuries the etfs from direction shares are there to help you magnify your perspective bull etfs for a rising market and bear etfs for a falling market direction shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade discover how we can help at directionshares.com today an investor should consider the investment objectives risks charges and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing the prospectus and summary perspective contain this and other information about direction shares to obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus please contact direction shares at 800-851-0511 the prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing an investment in the funds is subject to risk including the possible loss of principal the funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments distributor foresight fund services llc With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you gain access to each host charts and computer screen as they host their daily stock program. 
Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, Dave White, Larry Pesavento, or Victor Jones, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV yet, then visit TFNN.com today to see what you're missing. Stock market corrections are the number one reason that a buy-and-hold investment strategy produces the poorest results, and I have 73 years of data that proves it. Now, the good thing about economic difficult times is that the worst economy can produce the best rewards in the shortest period of time. In fact, during the last 130 years, 61% of that time period has been spent in recession. And if you're one of the 70% of American households relying on their 401ks and IRAs for retirement, you need the single strategy that is bulletproof against the turmoil of our stock markets. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com under Breaking News, click on Success is a Numbers Game to receive this must-have free report. This bulletproof strategy may be days away from giving the next signal. Don't neglect your retirement, and don't neglect this signal. If you're even a little bit interested in accumulating wealth, providing a better life for you and your family, then go to TFN.com to order your free copy of Success is a Numbers Game today. Implement the disciplines contained in this report, and success will be yours for the taking. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. It's that time of year again, and the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway is back. Every day in June, Monday through Friday, we'll be giving away a Great Panther Silver one-ounce silver bar, and all you have to do to enter is visit the front page of TFNN.com and fill out your entry. Great Panther Silver and TFNN wishing you a great start to the summer. Sign up today to have a chance to win a one-ounce silver bar during the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway the whole month of June at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we are back with this segment of today's Small Cap Roundup. Now, one of the things I was talking about, some of these biotechs before the break, and we've got a few minutes in this segment, and then we're going to be bringing on Hank Mulvihill after the break. Now, I wanted to get right into some of these names. Here's an interesting one that I wanted to show you and actually I'm trying to remember this one might actually be a mid cap rather than a small cap there's a few of them and I do tend to look at some of the mid caps as well and talk about them actually this one is a small cap it's Jiva Synergiva Biopharma and they make antiviral treatments market cap of about 852 million very thin trade about 125,000 shares a day. One of the basic rules that I'm using regarding the trading is that all the market caps will trade the same. The biggest difference is that with the smaller, thinner stocks, obviously they're going to tend to be a lot more volatile. I often will give them a bit more latitude in terms of the amount they can fall from their buy point because you know with a lot of these smaller names and I've had this happen myself if you try to cut your losses at seven or eight percent with some of these thinner names then you'll just get shaken out and the thing starts rallying again so sometimes rather than perhaps using a strict percentage I might use a trend line so looking at where the bottom of a recent short-term trend might be to determine a, a stop loss and sometimes 
There is a percentage that's more appropriate. It just depends upon the recent trading patterns, the recent trading character of an individual name. So let me put this one, Sinjiva, up here on a weekly chart. And I was looking at this one, and it's got some interesting little factors to it. Let's see here. This is... Now, this actually acquired another company back in November, and in its present entity, it actually only began trading back in November of 2011. That's where you see this big run-up. I'm indicating it on Tiger TV. You see this thing just had this huge run-up. And lately, it's been consolidating. No big surprise. That began the consolidation here. Really, most of this year is when it began to suffer. It had a terrific time there at the end of 2011. And then it's been struggling a little bit this year. But this is actually fairly constructive. What we're seeing in these patterns right here, you did have a consolidation in this area here that I'm indicating on Tiger TV. It rallied out of that, attempted a breakout. Now, this is just very indicative of what we're seeing in the markets in general right now, is that these breakouts have failed, making it very, very difficult when you enter one of these positions in one of these growth names. They really are struggling. So what happened then? It attempted a breakout. Now, what's happened since then is also, believe it or not, pretty constructive. You've got a nice double bottom chart pattern that has formed right here in the past few months, starting back in the later part of April. And, you know, no coincidence. That's when, back here in late April, is when the rally attempt began in the major indexes. And it fizzled, and then we've just seen a lot of volatility since then, some sell-offs, some rally attempts. So this one is, as of today, it's having a pretty good week thus far. It made a nice move up yesterday. It actually did clear a buy point and rallied to a new high, but is pulling back today in a bull market. This would be an excellent buy candidate at this juncture, but just given what we've seen in not only this stock, but in the wider market in general, just making things way too risky and unreliable. New buys are just unreliable at this particular juncture. So one other thing about this stock I wanted to point out, being a biotech, you often see that these names are not profitable because they're really dependent on new infusions of venture capital. They often do have some revenue, and that's the case here. And as many of you know, I generally am looking for the stocks with strong earnings, but I'll make an exception on some of these biotechs. So stick around. We'll be right back after the break with Hank Mulvihill talking about the Fed. You don't want to miss that. This is the Small Cap Roundup. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning? Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market Insights, to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits range from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades had been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations, including precise stops and target profit zones, leaving nothing left to guessing. Log on to TFNN.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial. Make sure you're a subscriber the next time Market Insights subscribers close out multiple winning trades. Take action and sign up for your free trial today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN has just launched our most exciting sale ever. If you purchase any amount of Tiger Dollars before Sunday, June 24th, you'll receive access to seven live 90-minute webinars hosted by each of our technicians here at TFNN. Not only do you get a 20 to 30% bonus on your purchase as you normally do with Tiger Dollars, but with this one-of-a-kind offer, you get over $1,000 in added value completely free. Each 90-minute live webinar usually sells for $149, and you get all seven of them absolutely free. Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Ken Shreve, Dave White, and Kate Stalter, you get all seven classes completely free. Whether you're an experienced trader or you're completely new to the markets, this sale is perfect for all levels of investors. Don't miss out on our best Tiger Dollar sale ever. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today and purchase your Tiger Dollars before June 24th. Don't wait and risk missing out on this one-of-a-kind offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, all right. We are back. So, let's see here. We have our European close, but... We have the U.S. indexes bouncing back a little bit, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ bouncing back a little bit after that. But we'll see. Long time to go in today's trading day. So as I mentioned at the top of the hour, one of the things, obviously, that the news media is absolutely obsessive about is every word that comes out of Ben Bernanke's mouth these days. So we have one of my favorite guests and a good friend of mine who's on today to help us sort through a little bit of what this media-generated hysteria about the Federal Reserve actually means. So I want to welcome Hank Mulvahill to the show today. And Hank, you know, as we were talking a little bit earlier this morning, uh, I'm always kind of fascinated by the way the markets always seem to anticipate that they're getting more of their drug in the form of further quantitative easing. And then when it doesn't happen, the markets tend to sell off. And it just seems like we go through this cycle every time there's an FOMC announcement. What do you make of all this, Hank? Well, hi, Kate. Uh, glad to be back. Thanks for having me on. And, yes, everybody does pay attention to Dr. Bernanke, and with good reason. I continue to emphasize the Fed is the most powerful actor in global finance. Ignore it at your peril. 
And does it mean you have to parse the statement like we used to do in the old days? Eh, not so much. These days the market does react and gives you all that. But the drug of choice, clearly, <laughs> worldwide, is Federal Reserve Central Bank liquidity injections. This will not stop. This will ultimately end up supporting Europe. Mark my words. Don't want to hear it out there, Radio Land, but it's going to happen. Already has happened. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Dr. Bernanke has made it quite clear that he's going to do whatever it takes. Did he come in roaring with some further program that we haven't heard of? No, because weirdly enough, there are some things happening in the U.S. that people aren't paying attention to in the doom and gloom community. All you traders out there, go examine your home building charts, home building company, stock charts, equity charts. A remarkable re recovery is happening here. Who knew? And based on the headline data, when you talk about starts and the rest of it, people think those are still low numbers, but something's going on because money's flowing into the sector. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bernanke pays very, very high attention to what U.S. housing is doing. So he thinks, my interpretation, that a radical program is not needed currently. He knows full well that he has to backstop Europe, and that's in process as we speak. Now, I don't want to put words in your mouth here, but one of the things, it sounds to me uh, that you do have a certain degree of confidence in his decisions, and I know that you study the Fed very closely and are much more of an expert than a lot of folks out there who just like to gripe on Facebook about their decisions and really have not studied it to the extent that you have. I mean, a lot of people, Hank, I mean, you know this, they're out there calling for his head. So, I, I, yeah, what do you I know, think? Kate. <laughs> it's really simple to, to say the Fed is the evil demon of finance, and I, I get it. I understand. And, and it's, it's absolutely apparent to anybody with a, a casual glance that the markets are completely distorted by Federal Reserve actions. I got it, okay? But mm -hmm. take them away. Take them away. Now what do you have? You really do, at that point, have economic collapse. I don't like the systemic debt at all levels, excuse me, at all government levels. Corporates mm -hmm. worldwide have done a pretty good job. Consumers worldwide have done a pretty good job of healing balance sheets since 08, 09. It's only governments that are really out of whack. There mm -hmm. the Fed has to stand because there is no other entity on earth that can create that kind of support. If you take away the ability for governments to function, you will see more of what you've seen in Greece over the last year and a half. You'll see it all over mm -hmm. the world. I mean, you'll see it in Dallas, Texas. Not good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds like uh, the central bankers, in a sense, are having to step in because the politicians are not and will not. Oh, I'll absolutely go there. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. As you know, our audience on this show consists of a lot of folks who are very accomplished traders who are interested in trading. Most of the time when we think about the, the Fed and interest rates, it gets discussed in the context of longer-term investing. And we can also talk about that because, obviously, that's, that's crucial to everybody as well. But for traders, for people with more of a short-term perspective, Hank, what should they know about right now? Oh well, look at what's look at what's working. Uh, you know, we 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 had a real crash on June first, and then we mm -hmm. had the two hundred fifty point down day, Dow down day, after the Fed announcement. But we haven't gone back to that low of June first. Mm -hmm. So look at what's working. Look look what's worked since and through since June first and through the Fed. I think you'll find some very interesting strengths. That's if you're long. If you're short, sure, there are plenty of good opportunities there too. And weirdly enough, weirdly enough, the 10-year has recovered. Uh, the yield, yield is going up. Mm -hmm. and, and I am a contrarian here. Everybody says the Fed, when it's doing its job, the 10-year Treasury should go down. I disagree. The 10-year Treasury going up indicates that there's more confidence in the economy and less concern that you have to go bury your money for 10 years for no return. That's my, my take on it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And you're right. That is a bit contrarian uh, to what we normally hear out there. 
Okay. So I, I, I think, <laughs> look, look, look at the strengths. Again, addressing it to traders, and I love to trade, but it's absolutely a contrary skill to managing money successfully long term. Sorry about that, but it's true. You can't do both. If you're a trader, mm-hmm. trade. If you're a long-term manager, manage. And the long-term management piece, if I could just cast the, the net there, mm-hmm. you've got the S&P over 2%, 2.2, something like that, a composite yield for all 500 stocks. The Dow itself is still over 3% today. These are real numbers, real time, 3.03 or something like that. And then you have the 10-year Treasury sitting at, what are we, 170, something like that, 162, I think. And mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you, you have one where you're pretty well guaranteed a certain rate of return for a long period of time, the other where you get the volatility. So you trade which one you want to trade. I think longer term, some stocks have some pretty con- con- compelling values. I really do, particularly mm-hmm. big cap U.S. dividend paying stocks. They really are compelling here. I've been saying this for a year and a half, and I'm not going to quit because we're higher than we were when I started saying this, and we're going to be higher, in my humble prediction, later. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, I was saying before you were on the show, and this is not any kind of genius observation. It's it's very clear if you look at what's going on with stocks in the growth category, for example, that category is struggling. And that's been a very tough area for people with a longer term or a even a swing trading perspective. We had a guest on the show last week, my friend Ed Hornstein, and he was talking about the fact that he's he's a growth hedge fund manager, big cap. He's been on the sidelines for a few months right now because the situation is really just too fraught with uncertainty at this point. But what what is your take? You're a, a an asset manager for your clients. How are you advising your clients at this point, Hank? <laughs> okay. To anybody out there, unless you are my client, this is general and not trading mm-hmm. or investment advice. <laughs> I do have licenses mm-hmm. I respect. So mm-hmm. I'll offer the opinion that I don't think this is going to be another 2008. I don't think it's even going to be another 2010 or another 2011 summertime. I really don't. I don't. I think that this will be remarkably contained, this particular drawdown that we're in right now. And I have powered through the painful you know, eight-ish, seven-ish percent drawdown uh, during this, this phase. I've kept a lot of cash on the sideline, and I think mm-hmm. we're going to have some pretty good opportunities coming up. But I, I again, I've already said big cap U.S. I, I just think is going to rule for quite some period of time. I love the growth story, Kate. You and I met through various things, uh, conferences right. like that. I love it. Mm-hmm. But when it doesn't work, you can get killed trying to chase those things. Meanwhile, go back mm-hmm. to your big battleship fortress balance sheet companies. The companies that can cover their dividends with not more than 50% of free cash, do those kind of screens. And, and I think you'll prevail. And, and you know what you're saying here, Hank, is absolutely consistent. I just want to say, because maybe for people who are new to this show, this is the small cap more of a swing trading oriented show but i've always said that's a bucket of discretionary money that is not where i have ever suggested that uh, one should put all of of their retirement money in there or the kids college fund these i have always viewed the trading as a discretionary area of a person's account and if that's something where you do need to sit on the sidelines for some period of time while your longer term accounts remain fully invested then it sounds like you're essentially saying something along the same lines well, Kate, I read your book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that's right. The, the, the Bill O'Neill book. <laughs> that, I, uh, <laughs> that one. <laughs> right, right. Well, what, what, are, what are some of the sectors that you like right now? Because oh, that seems yeah. to be, the, those seem to go kind of in and out of favor pretty quickly in the last few months. Well, I agree, but, but weirdly enough, there's a pretty solid trend in biotech that very few people are, are, are seeing. Mm-hmm. Go take a I look. I was talking about that, actually. I was talking about some small biotechs before you came on the show. Well, you know, hey, yeah, uh-huh. it's there, and it's, it's, it's gone right along during this, uh, this recent swoon. Uh, the mm-hmm. home builders, okay, I don't love them, but I sure like the way the stocks are performing. I treat that as a growth story. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you can't really right. treat it as a dividend story. Uh, the REITs, right. weirdly enough, the REITs continue to hold up very, very nicely. So mm-hmm. take some, take a look at some of those. I'm going to toss out a name here. It's not a recommendation, but mm-hmm. it's just an observation. eBay looks particularly interesting here, both technically and, and fundamentally. It's, mm-hmm. I think it's near an all-time breakout. And don't forget the hidden asset there as the world is changing to all kinds of electric banking, electronic banking. And that, mm-hmm. that would be the, the PayPal that they completely right. own. So I, I, that's a very interesting stock. Mm-hmm. That's a great point about PayPal because that that is one of the stories that I'm hearing quite a bit from a lot of fund managers is that the electronic payment area it continues to be one where a lot of people are expecting to see growth worldwide. I think it, it's easy for maybe people like you and me who were, were accustomed to using some of these services that we might think the market is saturated, but that's not true, especially on a global basis. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, the Scandinavians and Koreans have, have been ahead of us for, for 15 years, and, you know, cell phones as, as, as electronic wallets, and it's coming here. Mm-hmm. And I, hey, I definitely, Hank, yeah, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say, we've got another couple of minutes here. Just wanted to ask you about energy. That's something that I get a lot of questions about, a lot of people talking to me about the MLP sector with some of those crazy high dividend yields ha- has been on the forefront. What's your take on energy right now? Sure, very quickly. I love pipelines. I love midstream. And uh, I treat them as I do the big cap U.S. Leave them alone. They'll, they'll do fine for you. I believe mm-hmm. the, tax, the tax threats will be, will be met and will be overcome. Uh, the, the, uh, the sector is going to continue to boom. There is so much resource discovered here in the lower 48 that has to get transported to market. It has no alternative other than rail cars. So there will be more pipeline and gathering system construction. You can bank on that. The producers mm-hmm. are going to be under severe price pressure for the very same reason, the abundance of resource. But my goodness, what a great time to be in the United States of America with virtually free money, abundant energy, water, an educated workforce looking for something to do. I love that. <laughs> you know, you don't hear too much pro America these days, and it's just I'm sitting here grinning as you're saying that, Hank. That's terrific. <laughs> well, seriously, and I'm going to go really crazy with you here. And in five years, the U.S. will be exporting oil. We're already exporting natural gas. You can get natural gas on the ocean. You take it away from the two dollars fifty cents it is here, and you get into a nine dollar to twelve dollar market. Seriously. Now, are, are you? What about the effect of increased regulation? And we've got about a minute here now. Oh, you know, <laughs> I can't imagine that everybody's going to do what uh, New York State has done, which is ban uh, frac- hydraulic uh, fracturing of, of mm-hmm. rock, which has been going on since the first oil well, virtually. So mm-hmm. it's not new technology. And the, mm-hmm. the industry is very good about it. So I, I don't think you'll regulate that out of existence. Uh, President Obama put off that decision till 2015, and it will be put off again. And right. it doesn't mean right. it's an environmental threat. You can have both. You really can. You can have good, clean oil wells that contain the, the emitted gases. Mm-hmm. I've seen them. I was just on a site in Colorado three days ago. Okay. And I think even with uh, a lot of the ideology that's against it, they still realize they need the revenue as well uh, coming into the federal coffers. (laughs) The revenue, and and, uh, remember, it's nice when your lights come on when you hear this. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Hank, we're out of time. This flew by. All right. I will talk to you again very soon. Hey, Kate, great day to you. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right, everybody, stick around. We've got one more segment on today's Small Cap Roundup. I'll be right back after this break. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities.
opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and I very, very strongly support the use of this opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total resource base of more than 23 million gold ounces. Great Basin Burnstone Mine in South Africa opened in February of this year with a resource of 20 million gold ounces, becoming the first mine to open in the historic Whitwaters Rand Basin in the last 30 years. The Burnstone Mine is projected to have a 25-year mine life and is fully financed with production anticipated to be over 250,000 ounces per year at a cash cost of only $450 per ounce. The Hollister mine in Nevada became fully integrated in the fourth quarter of 2010 with annual production estimates of 110,000 ounces of gold per year over the eight-year mine life at a cash cost of only $527 per ounce. Great Basin Gold is cash flow positive and trades on the Toronto and New York Stock Exchanges under the symbol GBG. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, last segment of today's small cap round. I wanted to come back to the biotech idea because that is really clearly something that has been outpacing recently. Let me let me show you another mid cap on here that is one that I'm sure a lot of you know about that I've been talking about for quite some time. And this is QuestCore Pharmaceuticals. And I think I mentioned a little bit earlier that the mid cap arena is I may have started to talk about it and then got sidetracked onto something else, but Mid-caps are another interesting area that tends to frequently get overlooked, but just like the small caps, can be a good springboard for further price gains in many of these growth names. So this one you see is rallying to some new highs. You know, it's easy to be looking at some of these names and feel like I missed out. And if you're in some of these trades, you definitely have to keep some tight stops in here. 
in order to prevent these from pulling back into a consolidation as they've been known to do. Now, a lot of these names also, if you study their charts, you tend to realize buying at new highs does not always work with some of these smaller and mid-cap names with lower levels of liquidity. This one moves just about 2 million shares a day, so not bad liquidity. But it has been the case with a lot of these in the past couple of years in particular that a new high means that the stock is topping out and a better place to have entered the stock would have been at a lower level when you did see some kind of moving average crossover. So just saying, this is one of these names, It's this has been a little bit on the fence because there have been a couple of times when new highs have led to further growth in the price here. In fact, this one, I can see a couple of occasions where that's occurred about a year ago. It rallied higher. This one did not suffer too much last summer, by the way, in the big market pullback, which is another indication of how a stock might be setting up for further gains when it performs better than the major indexes in a market-wide downturn. Okay, so that's Quest Core. Let me show you one other one. I've got a little bit of time right here before we wrap up today. The ticker here is PCYC, and this is Pharmacidic, pharmacidics, pharmacyclics. I can never pronounce this one right. Some of these biotechs have some crazy names. Pharmacyclics. Now, this is another one. Rallying to new highs. This is, in, this is also in mid-cap. And don't forget, I consider the small cap level 2 billion market cap or below. Some of the Indexes consider it $3 billion or below. In either case, this one has recently rallied above that $3 billion level, so it really very recently would have qualified. And this makes cancer treatments by some of uh, new, very, very new treatments with molecular drugs that this company is using, falls right into the category of some of these biotechs that are plowing some of their, well, they actually, they don't really have any revenue to put back into the company. They are really dependent on venture capital, and that's how a lot of these biotechs are financed. Rallying to new highs right here. Again, it's very, very tempting to want to jump into some of these right now. A pullback would be the thing to see. I'm very encouraged by the strength, the technical strength, in a lot of these names at this juncture. All right, to so stick around, we have Thursday's show coming up. We might have that big health care decision next time I am on the air with you. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks to Hank Mulvahill. I'm Kate Stalter. And don't forget, check out the newsletter, Low Price Leaders, on TFNN.com.